Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating Kendall's coefficient of concordance using Microsoft Excel. Kendall's coefficient of concordance is also known as Kendall's W. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have in this worksheet fictitious data I'll be using for this example. And here in column A, I have five raters one through five, and at the top here, in this row, row one, I have 10 papers represented, one through 10. So the raters here would be counseling professionals that were recruited to rank these 10 papers, one through 10. So the data in here are all ranks. So for example, for rater one, the top ranked paper was paper five. The second highest ranked paper four and so on according to these ranks. So Kendall's W gives us a measurement of agreement. It lets us know how well these raters agreed on their rankings of these papers. A value of zero for W equals no agreement and one would be perfect agreement so Kendall's W ranges from zero to one so moving down the worksheet I have values here already in place for N and M N is the number of papers so this is count B2 through K2 the function to produce the N and then I have M, and M is the number of raters, count A2 through A6. So that function gives us the M value. So we'll be using these two variables as we look to calculate the value of W, which I have here in this equation to the right. W equals 12 times S divided by M squared times N cubed minus N minus mt. The value of s is in this lower equation. s equals the sum of r minus the mean of r squared. So I'll show you how we make these calculations. To start off here I want to note that t, the value t here in the denominator of this equation is a correction factor used when we have tied ranks. There are no tied ranks in this example, so the value of t would be equal to zero. And zero times m, in this case five, is zero, so I'm not including this in the function that I'm gonna build. So it would just be m squared times n cubed minus n. So for the numerator, I'm gonna start with the numerator, calculate w. It's going to be 12 times s, so it's equal sign, 12, asterisk, and then to calculate s, I'm going to use DEVSQ, and then the sum of the ranks for each paper, which I have here in green, B7 through K7. So that value is 18798. I also have an alternate way here of calculating the numerator. The calculation for the denominator will be the same as I use here to the left. But this is an alternate method I have in this function here. So the DEVSQ function makes this fairly easy, but what does it mean? What are we calculating with this function? So I'm going to use this cell E10 we just look at DEVSQ, we can see it returns the sum of squares of deviations of data points from their sample mean. So using this row 7, where I have the sums of all of the ranks for the papers, I'm going to take these values and compute the average. So the equal sign average. So we can see the average here is 
0.5. Next I'm going to subtract this average or mean from each sum. So in cell B8 here equal sign the sum minus the mean. And I'm going to press F4 here to make the mean an absolute reference. I'll autofill this and then I'm going to square this value. So this will be equal sign the value shift 6 for the caret symbol then 2. Autofill this and the value that we get using the DEVSQ in this case DEV SQ before it's multiplied by 12. We see that's 1566.5. If I take the sum of these squares, I get the same value. So that's what the DEV SQ function does. So moving now to the denominator here in cell C14. This will be m squared times n cubed minus n as I have here toward the right. So this will be equal sign. First we'll start with m squared. 5 shift 6 squared times we have n cubed minus n. So this will be n shift 6, 3 for cubed, minus n. That gives us 24750. And again, this denominator here is calculated in the same way for this alternate method. The alternate method is just for the numerator. So now to calculate w, we just divide the denominator by the numerator. Equal sign numerator divided by denominator and the W statistic is equal to 0.759515. Next I'll calculate chi-square because we'll be using chi-square to calculate the probability value down here and chi-square is equal to M times N minus 1 times W. So this would be equal sign M and then shift 8 for asterisk n minus 1 shift 8 again and then w so chi square is equal to 34.178 degrees of freedom would be equal to n minus 1 so this will be equal sign n minus 1 nine degrees of freedom. And then we have the probability value. So the probability value here, the equal sign chi square distribution RT. C-H-I-S-Q dot D-I-S-T dot R-T. Returns the right tailed probability of the chi square distribution. We can see we have two arguments here, X and the degrees of freedom, x will be the chi-square value. Degrees of freedom, of course, 9. So the probability value here is 0 0.000083. The null hypothesis for Kendall's coefficient of concordance is that the rankings of the objects are independent of one another. So using an alpha of 0 0.05, in this case we would reject the null hypothesis and say that the rankings of the objects are not independent of one another. I hope you found this video on calculating Kendall's W in Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.